What's up everyone, welcome back to Storytime. We are here today with a good friend of ours and so stoked to have him back in the new Sofa Work studio, Evan Riss. Happy to be Yay! back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Well, it's lucky to have you back in, man. Um, so obviously, we're coming off the back end of the URC. Uh, I bring that up immediately off the bat because it is the most relevant topic right now for us, obviously. Um, I just want to get, honestly, how are you feeling? Um, obviously, it's not the result we were wanting. Completely get that. I know there's probably disappointment in that. But if we try to put just the final result aside how are you feeling how are the guys feeling the team you're obviously going into uh training camp now for the box um urc's done let's look at the whole season how are you feeling about everything yeah i'm like obviously it is it is disappointing mm. yeah. um i, I think I, uh, guys are taking it quite like putting it on themselves i think there's a lot of expectation and stuff yeah. and um like I said earlier, like it feels like we kind of let a lot of people down, mm. and I, I know it's it's, it's sport and isn't the beginning and end all, and mm. there's so much things that are more important than sport, but um, it is a source of um, a bit of joy and happiness mm. in the country mm. and stuff, and like for ourselves, like we, it's it's disappointing because we really kind of set a set a goal to to win it again, and to come so close, it's and, and lose, it's 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 tough. And like for a bunch of factors, I mean, like it's because it was Kutsi's last game, and like personally, like I was disappointed. We couldn't like do it for him, uh -huh. and just the team, and like for Dobbo, and like every like a lot of reasons, and it feels like he let a lot of people down. Uh -huh. um, but that's sport. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. So you win some, you lose some. Yeah. And um, could have gone either way. Yeah. Creates the monster that really like. Planned well and, and and a lot of a lot of tricks and stuff and yeah. um, little ways to to influence the game. So yeah. well done. Um, but yeah, we will try again next year. I mean, yeah, there it's always another year. There we go. Yeah, I think that's obviously we attended at the stadium. The attendance was mind blowing. To have that many people in that stadium, the whole city was on fire. Mm. Um, and that was such a special moment, especially being Kitsi's last game. It was so cool to see that many people stand up when he walked off and give that standing ovation. And it just shows you the impact that the Stormers, and especially Kitsi, and he's now the Stormers' most capped player in history. Yeah. Right? That's like, geez, dude, what an achievement, you know? Um, and I know, it, I know it must be emotionally hard on you guys, obviously, dealing with the loss. Um, but there's so many other things that you guys accomplished um, and I know m maybe that might feel a bit silly to hear um, but you look at the amount of people that attended you look at all the smiling faces in the stadium and result aside um, th the amount of families that were there and little kids and Kitsi becoming the most capped and then you like read Amy and, uh, and, 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 and Stephen's messages online with their posts and you see how much everyone means to each other and how much of a family everyone is and it's like you know what we interrupt this episode to thank our sponsor truth coffee roasting truth coffee roasting have put the effort in to source beans from around the world to bring you exclusive high premium coffee flavors that are not just a caffeine fix they keep me going they keep the team at story time going and now they can keep you going too use your exclusive story time code and get 10 percent off all premium coffees Thank you, Truth. We interrupt this episode to thank one of our sponsors, Frankly's. Frankly's is a fun, high-energy company born in South Africa, best known for its fun-matching soft cotton underwear and epic print designs. It's all about matching with your partner or bestie, just as we do on this very show. There's a print to match every mood and every moment, from leopard to comic to flamingos to galaxy design. There's everything that you could possibly want out of a pair of underwear. Go to the description and claim your 20% off voucher now. If you sign up for their monthly mailers, not only do you firsthand get all their latest releases and all their special discounts, but you get a further 15% off, equaling to a total of 35% off every single one of your purchases. Available for a limited time only, as well as within South Africa, the UK, and Sweden. Frankly, it's made to match. Thank you very much. We made it to a final 
two seasons in a row with the captain that's the most capped in history of the team at a record-breaking attendance. It was an incredible day. Um, yeah, and I, I know that doesn't change the result. I know you guys, especially yourself, you're very hard on yourself, which I understand. Um, but you played a phenomenal game. Um, <laughs> well done. Thank well you. done. No, it's, it's, it is true what you said about the positives we have to take out. And it felt like afterwards, like I told Dion, like it felt like we have to play again tomorrow and win it. Like it didn't feel real. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, I must say in comparison to last year, just the amount of, not, yeah, I want to say pressure, not pressure, just like expectation mm. and mm. the chats around it and like how much people actually like every single person you walk into like talks about it. Where last year it was obviously still big, but it wasn't as big as it was this year. And um, I felt it way more during the week than I did last year. Really? Yeah, I don't know, weirdly enough. I don't know if it's the amount of games I played this, this year with my injury, if it's not just, not that I'm not used to it. Like, I have played there before, so it's not mm. something new. Mm. Like, I like nerves, it means I'm ready. But um, yeah, for some reason, it was just, I personally felt, felt a bit different this year. Really? But um, ugh, like, it, it was two points. I mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's not like it was a runaway. No. It was very thing. close. And stuff, but as you said, like, it's just something that, it, I mean, where we were, let's say 2020, 2021, the Kenyan, where it was like this union, like everyone said, this union is done and, and gone, and like there's no future left, and yeah. everyone gave us a lot of, of, of slack, not signing with the American investors, yes. and well, why are we so crazy yes. not to accept the deal and whatever. And um, look where we are now. Mm. Yeah. Two URC finals in a row. One gold, one silver. Yeah. With the most capped player and captain and yeah and stuff and just the kind of yeah the sense of community and family we created over these past two years and which is still going to go on for a long time. Mm. We can be very proud of the, of the things we've done in terms of that. Yes. And um, obviously results are important but it's not everything I always say the sun always shines the next day yep. so there um, you go look after that but um, yeah we'll definitely take a good look hard, hard look at the game or whatever and just obviously prepare better for, for next season mm -hmm. I like the way you said that that you said because that's exactly how people are going to look back right now it's kind of like we're looking at it under a microscope because it's only been two three days mm. A year from now, we're not going to be looking at it like that because there's going to be so many other things that have happened between this past Saturday and whenever this day is that we're looking back. Yeah. And we're going to go, you know what? It was a gold, it was a silver, it was a most capped captain. It was, it's, it's, it's a great time in rugby for the Stormers. Yeah. Um, and that's how we're going to look at it. And you know what? Next year, for another URC, we'll come back again, we'll play flipping good rugby all over again, and we'll make it to the final again. Um, and that's how we need to look at every single season. Um, so hats off to you guys. Well done. Don't, right. don't think because it wasn't a final win that it was anything other than hats off to Munster. Well done. Yeah. You've got those two extra points. Well played. You guys can take your gold. You can have it for now. That's fine. Take it for now. It's okay. We'll give you 365 days. Um, but yeah, well played to them. There, was, there was something that a friend of mine and this is more kind of like studying into the game. A um, friend of mine that was watching with us came and knows rugby really, really, really well. And before we sat in the stadium, him and I were chatting about it across the road over a beer and looking at it and going, the Stormers are the better team, even if it's just on paper. We are the better team. What are Munster going to do that is going to try to give them the upper hand. And he was explaining rugby to me and the different tactics and how they could come at it and how do different styles of rugby kind of clash and what works better. And his going into the game was Munster are going to come with a super high level of physicality. They're going to play very hard rugby on the, on the front line. Could you feel on the field? Is that what you felt that they were doing in terms of gameplay? Like we obviously do analysis and everything and mm. we saw that they're kind of like they play with similar styles to the Bulls and if it's done right it's very effective mm. and especially on the field like this um, yeah like obviously the field I think had a factor to play as well it was, big time yeah um, we do, we're doing it over which I can't wait for because you can't play rugby on the field like that it's yeah. 
it's ridiculous actually and um they really used it to their advantage right mm. um kept it structured and uh they had good ball like they kept the ball a lot a good mm. ball um and they carried well and um like yeah like you can't make a mistake in the middle of the field they kick out the uh crowley i think is the flaf was playing well kicking mm. very well and then it's just defending them all on your five meters so um small margins obviously but that's yeah. a final um but they did come very well prepared and like with a good plan and mm. credits to that. Um, I don't think our plan was wrong. I think we had the right plan. We just didn't execute it. We had so little ball. If I actually think I sat and watched the game and we didn't like attack a lot at all. We had mm. so, such little ball position mm. and stuff. So we, they didn't give us a chance to, to play. To kind of find your feet. Yeah, yeah. and that's well done. Like, yeah. That's a good c tactic and I did that well. Um, but yeah, look, there's so much factors and stuff you can yeah. And actually, like, look at and put in. Um, but yeah, like they they prepared well. Yeah, they did. They did. Them. I didn't I didn't realize. I'll be honest with you. Until like halfway through the second half, that Archie Sneiman was playing for 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 Munster. Oh yeah. Um, and he's a champion. Yeah, he's yeah. also a unit of a human. <laughs> he's a big guy. He's built like a fridge. He's just like, and um, I was looking at all the photos of them celebrating the win and being handed the medals, and the immature side of me I saw them put the medal on him and I was like but he's but he's South African yeah. you know it's the feeling of like why yeah. why, 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 why do you do this to us you know um, this is such a good player and I'm so grateful that he's like South African and he will he is World Cup um, yeah, well, Springbok squad eh? well we don't know what the World Cup squad is but um, okay. he's with me in training camp now okay so. sick yeah um, I'm happy he's back because he obviously had a long like run with injury on his yeah. knee and stuff so yeah. For him just being back consistently now is it's a good it's a good yeah. sign yeah yeah so you guys are now in you just got back from derbs yeah. good old derbs brew um in training camp so how is training camp working now starting because i think we 100 days till the start of the of the world cup give yeah. or take a day or two um how does that look from now moving towards the world cup how, what do you guys have planned in terms of training um, there's a three week like training camp in Pretoria from the 10th of June. They'll still announce that squad and then it's yeah, three weeks they'll be in Pretoria and then after that the rugby championship starts. Yeah. It's four games in total. Um, Australia, New Zealand and two Argentina okay. games and then the 8th of August, um, if I read correctly, they announced the World Cup squad. 8th of August? Yeah. Okay. Guys touring and stuff and then immediate after that there's a warm-up game in Wales, um, yeah, against Wales in Cardiff, and then that big test at Twickenham against the All Blacks. Yes. And then the preparation, or well not the prep, but like I think then all the other like arrangements start for the World Cup. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay. yeah, it's it's gonna be a lot of like rugby now, and it's very really like like yeah. this. So yeah. um, yeah, it's 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 gonna be like a long time away from home if you do go all the mm -hmm. way to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do we have Rossi back? Um, I, like, I'm not, I can't say much about the coach's stuff. He's our DOR, director of rugby. Um, okay. But like, there's no like bands and stuff on him. No, like, he's, okay. he's normal. Yeah. Okay. Because I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I was actually trying to read up on it this morning. Kind of, it, it, it went quiet for a little while. Because there was a lot of drama around Rossi and all the ref stuff and all that kind of thing, which I won't give my opinion on. Um, upset people last time I gave my opinion. Basically, I was on Rusty's side with everything and everyone was like, well, yeah. and I was like, no, nah, he was right. Um, but I wasn't sure if he was director of rugby, if he was stepping physically onto the field with the guys again and kind of coaching from there, or if he was kind of more in the background, sort of navigating that way. Um, either way, as long as he's there, we love having him there. He's such a unit of a human. Um, watching that Chasing the Sun from the last World Cup and you see how much he cares and how much it means to him and to the players, like, broke my heart. I cried the whole way through Chasing the Sun, so I'm excited looking for another one. Are you, you must be pretty amped with the games coming up, the Argentina games, the New Zealand games, Australia games. Um, do you have to kind of start flipping your mindset from URC rugby into international rugby? Is there kind of like a change that starts happening for you mentally now? Uh, not, not massively. Obviously, it's a different ball game. 
Mm. Um, obviously, tier level is mm. the highest level that, that there is. Um, I just always just try and give my best yeah. and enjoy it and um, kind of just take in where you are mm. and um, appreciate that you're there and like obviously work hard and uh, yeah, enjoy your time with the people around you there and stuff because mm. it, yeah, like it still it sometimes feels like a dream. I mean, yeah, um, because we were training in Durban and um, the previous World Cup, like I was obviously training with a lot of these guys that were there and um, there's this Kingston Beach Club bar in, in Kings Park and our, the, um, we watched the game there, obviously. And I actually told some of the guys, like last time you guys at the World Cup playing the final, I was sitting there having beers, watching really? you guys. And it's kind of a, it's a funny thing now, actually just um, training with some of you, not, not, you know, not secured of anything, but just actually training with you. And um, the last so time cool. it was like, yeah, I was having beers there and stuff. And now no actually training ways. with you guys. And now you're in the squad, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of, it's, it's, it's cool to like see those kind yeah. of things and like see where you've, how far you've come from a certain point and stuff. Yeah. It's cool like, yeah. just to think about it and kind of yeah, reflect on it and everything. That is, that is such trippy thought because the last time we had you on the body post was Chiefs like middle of last year somewhere. It was just after. For the, for the second season. Yeah, it was just after, I think I did my rib. It wasn't it just, it wasn't it somewhere there? Yes, yeah. it was just after your rib. Yeah. And we were saying then, you were like, oh, I don't know, am I gonna be at the training camp? Am I gonna be at the training camp? And I was like, yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. All of us were saying that. And now here you are. And now you're in the training camp and getting ready for it. So that's, it's, it's, it's such an accomplishment again. Looking at the weekend, looking at URC, looking at international rugby, I'm so excited. It's 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 such a positive light for everyone, um, yeah. just rugby as a whole. And it's been I've made so many happy memories and crazy stories at that stadium this yeah. year. Um, yeah, from oh, great games, seeing you guys for beers, whether it's you know after or the next day, or whatever, or everyone being at good old village together and kind of yeah. having having a bit of a scop there which is which is a lot of fun um it's been it's been awesome um i'm sure you guys must be super stoked to start getting into these games the practice games um i've i've read a lot of i've tried to at least read a lot of news on what are australia doing what are new zealand doing how is everyone else sort of prepping um, and what's been cool with our conversation with you last time as well as with kitsi last season to kind of get insight into that. How do you guys feel when facing Australia? How do you feel when facing Argentina? And how does that sort of shift? And I think what we've been seeing, again, disagree with me if, 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 if you think differently, but you, Northern and Southern rugby lately, it's two very different styles of rugby. Um, and Northern rugby seems to performing very well at the moment, which is why Wales and France and Ireland are playing such high level rugby. Being someone that knows rugby as well as you do, what is that difference for someone like myself trying to understand this better? My uh, lack of knowledge always leads me to the corner of Southern Hemisphere rugby is very physical and very hard, whereas Northern is more quick on the feet, lots of swing back forth. Is that kind of the right assumption to sort of make about it? You're on the right track. No, um, like the Northern Hemisphere, like especially Ireland, mm. those guys are very system based and it's taught from a young age. Like mm. they know exactly where to run, how to run, how to pass. Like it's very like they taught in a system kind of. Like, yes. And um, where I feel us, us, especially South Africans, we have a lot of guys who play on like what they see. And like we, all, we always bring physicality. It's like just part of us, but very, um, it's, inst it's instinct based. Like they, mm. it's like just some guys just have X factor. Like they just yeah. like do crazy stuff and like, and it works. Yeah. And um, like, and plus the physicality and the structure we have, that works for us. Like if you bring us like that kind of system, like the system based plan to a South African yeah. team, it won't work because really? guys aren't wired like that. Yeah. But when Ireland guys, it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's, they play great rugby. It's just um, that's how they taught from young. And um, we not we not we aren't taught that. Um, 
they think, yeah, obviously with us not being a Super Rugby now, we don't see so much like of Australian and New Zealand teams or play against them. Yeah. Uh, but they still have their Super Rugby and they obviously stay competitive and everything. It's going to be interesting to see with Eddie Jones at Australia now, yeah. how they do. And they're always good. New Zealand are always good. Argentina uh, are always good. So it's like the Southern Hemisphere brings a lot of competition. Yeah. And um, obviously your northern teams, France, Ireland, Scotland, they proper teams. So it's good. It's going to be fun. And it's going to be like as you see how everything plays out uh, during uh, the year. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I was, we were chatting about this again when we were, when we were talking about rugby with with the friends of mine and we were saying I think and again I stand corrected on this I think South Africa as a as our international squad is the only World Cup team that has an entire home base team so not a single one of our players are not South African yeah we don't have like internet no yeah we don't have like oh, an like italian the, dude right on the field oh like, like yeah. yeah i know yeah. oh yeah like an england guy has a, yes. like a guy who's born australian and like yes. immigrated no exactly. we, no all of our guys are and we i th- actually think we're the only team in the world cup that has that at the moment i could because I, I maybe like tongo or something or mm. like there could be a team that we missed but we try to sit with a list and go like you know, France, no, England, no, and try to like, just out of interest, try to figure yeah. this out of like who actually has like genuine homebred guys on the field. Yeah. Um, and that's such a cool thing we have, a 33-man squad, every single person South African. Yeah, that's cool. Like, you mentioned Tonga, like, it's going to be interesting to see because obviously like New Zealand and those guys like they had a lot of like Tongans and Samoans and yeah. like guys play for them yeah. and whatever but now with the new rule that if you stay if you immigrate back or you don't play for say now you're a Tongan and you play for New Zealand and you don't play for New Zealand for the All Blacks anymore and for a certain amount of time you don't play any international rugby for New Zealand and you can convert back to your where you're from yeah so the Tongan team is going to have a few like proper players whatever like All Blacks or whatever playing for them in this World Cup because they did the switch back. Like, I know Israel Falao uh, qualifies no for Tongan, Malakai, okay. Fikatoa uh, qualifies for, for, for Tongan. So, like, it's going to be, a, they're going to be a good team. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. It's, that's going to be interesting to see a lot of guys who, like, reverted back to uh, where they're from, actually, and play yeah. for their country. So, um, yeah, I think people forgot about that. So, it's going to be cool and interesting to see how that yeah. pans out in the World yeah. Cup. I'm, ex- oh, I'm so stoked for this World Cup because it's going to be a solid structure for every single team. Like, everyone's playing really good rugby. Um, I think these test matches are going to be quite lekker to watch as well. Um, do you guys, and I mean, like, you guys, you personally, looking at these test matches, you must be so stoked to take on test matches overseas at international level and kind of, you know, What's the saying? Like, get your beak wet. But that, you know, like, mm. that kind of feel time. Is there any team, and I think we asked you the similar question last time, I'll ask you again. Is there any team looking forward that you, like, really excited to play against that you, like, I'm already played against no. this team? Um, and is there any team for you right now that's really standing out performance wise? that you kind of looking at moving forward into the year? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I just want to make the squad first before I like say I want to play against. Yeah. But like if if it's a type of scenario and um, things work out, like I haven't played against the All Blacks yet. Like I think that's yeah. kind of a, yeah. like a special thing. I don't know how it feels. I've never done it before. Yeah. Um, it'll be quite cool if I like if I am granted the chance or yeah, whatever happens, um, I like really like to know how it is to to play the All Blacks. Yeah, because yeah. um, it's such a historical fixture between yeah. South Africa and New Zealand. So hopefully, yeah. I, one can only wish and dream. But um, that would be cool. Like that would be something yeah, I would really so like. Much. Be cool to experience. Yeah, dude, I I, I don't want to like jinx anything or say it too early, but I think you're definitely going to get picked for the squad. <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll, I'll 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 put my prediction there now. Um, <laughs> It was, I, I was actually on WhatsApp while watching the game. He's watching at home and watching in the stadium. And there's some crazy stories I'm going to tell you about the stadium because I actually want to get your opinion on that kind of thing. But um, 
him and I were chatting over WhatsApp while watching the game. And in message, I get a message from my dad and he's like, Evan Rose is such a beast. And I'm like, yes, boy, <laughs> It was like the coolest thing to read because, and that's the thing with knowing you as well as we do. You're such a sweetheart. You have such a heart of gold. And then I watch you run on the field and the way you hit people. And I'm like, this is two different people. This is like <laughs> game on and game off kind of thing, which is what you said last time. And we, we, we spoke last time on Dwayne Vermeulen and how people had tried to blow that out of the water between the two of you. And it's been so cool to see the relationship between the two of you blossom throughout this year as well. And he's been playing phenomenal rugby overseas. He has. Um, and is now returning. He doesn't know what his future endeavours are, but um, obviously he's with us in camp. So he's yes. there now. So yeah. I don't know what yeah. his plans are for the future. He's not, yeah, he says that he's not sure yet. So okay. we'll wait to see. Okay, well, he's a unit and champion, so anything he chooses to no. do, everyone's like, cool, we're with you. No, yeah, he's like, a legend. <laughs> yeah, love it. Yeah, I'm so happy to see him get on the field again. Someone was saying to me the other day, they bumped into him, I think in a steers. I think it was in a steers. They bumped into Dwayne Vermeulen in a steers, and the first question that comes to mind for me is, well, what did he order? Like, that's the first thing I want to know. Like, what does what Dwayne Vermeulen order at Steers? Is he getting, like, you know... One of everything. Yeah, exactly. One of everything. And, like, easy work for him. Like, I'd love to know that. Um, I wanted to tell you about the stadium. So, oh, yeah. we had... Please. Mm. So, the day we all went to Village together... After what game was that? And I walked in with my arm. Oh, that wasn't the Holocons game, I think. I think it was the Holocons mm. game. No. Yeah. And I had my arm in my bag sling. I dislocated my shoulder. And the whole week, I was chatting with Amy. And I was going like, okay, hey, Holocons game. Then we're going, you know, then everyone's here. Then everyone's there. Lekka, lekka. How are we going to arrange the weekend? And Amy's just always been, I'll say this every single time we talk about rugby. Amy's an absolute angel of a human. Um, she's mommy to everyone. I don't even play rugby and she's mommy to me. <laughs> yeah. it, it's insane. I love her so much. Yeah. And, um, and we get to village and I walk in and the only thing on my mind is when I walk in and Amy sees me, she's going to be like, what the fuck did you do? She's going to be disappointed, like mad. Uh, yeah, so. I, I, I don't want to disappoint Amy. Yeah. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing because I'm like, I don't think I can disappoint yeah. You know, like I don't play for any team. So technically I'm not anyone's responsibility and got my arm in this thing and come in and I see she's sitting at the table and she turns around and sees me with my arm like kind of hooked up and she just goes, Fuck, what did you do this time? What happened after that happening outside the stadium was quite a weird experience and weird thing to go down because mm. it felt very planned. It felt very targeted. It was very strange. Um, and shit happens, I guess, but um, weird things happen. And then watching the final, stadium's packed. What, around, mm -hmm. give or take 60,000 people in the stadium. And we walking, I think, to get a beer. We're walking through the crowd to get a beer. And there were one or two people uh, that would mention Lioness. Oh, yeah. and be like, what a great show, whatever. And, and I, every part of my soul and being is grateful and appreciative and loves when that happens. I love meeting people that got to watch or chose to watch a project that we're very emotional about. But I'm walking, not paying attention, and I'm holding a beer, and I'm like trying to I think I was trying to find Jess in the crowd around me somewhere. And as I'm walking, someone comes from like the side and grabs like around my neck and kind of pulls me like off my feet. And immediately my head's going to a space of two weeks ago, three, four oh, yeah. weeks ago, we got jumped outside the stadium. So not an aggressive retaliation, just a retaliation of like, immediately I don't know what's going on. Yeah. There's this person that's got their armor on my throat. I'm trying to like smile, and, eh, you know, like be very cool about it. But it, it's also quite a threatening thing to feel. And this person's grabbing me and I've got my head going like this. And then another guy joins in and he's grabbing this arm. And I kind of try to hold on and just kind of like ask the question of like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, what, what, what is this? And he's like, no, are you the guy? And I'm like, dude, right now in my life, that can mean a lot of different things. Yeah. You know, like, is that a good you're the guy or is that a bad you're the guy? You yeah. know, 
Last time it was a, you're a bad, the guy. Yeah. Is this a good one? Um, and he's like, no, lioness. And I'm like, oh, dude, thank you so much for watching. Trying to like stumble up like words of gratitude to him and just kind of show appreciation. And it was just absolute chaos of just being like pulled this way, pulled that way, pulled this way. And it was a really, I got back to, to, to our seats and I was saying to my friend, I was just like, that was, I've never had someone physically grab me that much to the point where it actually felt threatening, mm. but you trying to have a moment of like celebration together. Um, do you experience moments like that as well? Yeah, I think especially because you're a rugby player, like people, I don't know, when they greet you, kind of want to like physically like feel you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, listen, like, I'm very, <laughs> I, I hate people in my space. Like, this yeah. is, like, you can ask my family and stuff, like, this is my space. And, yes. like, I, I choose you, I let into my space. Yeah. And, um, like, I hate people, like, I always say pop in my bubble, like, very, like, on me. Like, if it's people I know and love and adore, more than most Perfectly welcome. fine. Yeah. But it's, like, randoms and stuff, I don't know. Gets quite irritating. And, yeah. like, you, like, I've never, like, be an idiot about it, but like, I don't know, like sometimes people th like think they have just like right of way because you're oh, yeah. a rugby player that can like, like people like, I don't know, like I, I hate it when it's, they don't have manners. It's the funniest thing, but like, it is, yeah. If I'm talking to someone, like it's the funniest thing to me, like people have no scorm <laughs> at all. Like you'd be in the middle of like, oh, me and you would be chatting and like person would come like, don't, no worries at all. No, stop. Like, hello, how are you? I'm like, I'm good, but I'm in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> I was telling him that I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to this guy. Like, especially with like close friends and stuff. Like, yeah. um, that's when it irritates me the most. Like, you out with like close group of friends and oh. just really want to spend time with them and, yeah. and talk to them and stuff. And like, I, I would never say no for a photo ever, ever, ever. But um, just like the way sometimes people do it is a bit. Yeah. Um, dis yeah. not disrespectful, but just like invasive. Yeah, oh, like invasive. Story. Like my mom always says, like I don't understand people. Like, like even when I was younger, when I saw rugby players out. Like I wouldn't go because I just feel like I'm bothering them. You know? Yes, you know? and it's not that you're bothering, but like I just like, I'm like no, like that guy's now having lunch yeah. with his family or yeah. with his friends. Like I don't think he's in the mood for it. Like, and uh, like sometimes as well, like. I've had like girls who like I kind of like, and then they like they out with me or something, and then like the amount of like attention, <laughs> and they just like sorry can't. I'm, really? I have no, I have no like, I have no. How can I say control, control. over it? Yeah, yeah. no control over it. Like it's not me. It's it's them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but people yeah. like some people just can't understand it. Like yeah. And it's yeah. It's obviously like I have to like obviously get someone not get but like be with someone one day who understands and yeah. like you and Jess are a perfect yeah. example of that Amy and Stephen or JJ and you know like they um, they like so you know, someone who like understands what this person mm. Mm. does and whatever and supports them for it and knows yeah. it's not that's not him it's just what he does yeah um, yeah and but you are like I just hate it when people just to get back to one point where people are just like <laughs> obnoxiously just and obviously when people have beers and stuff flowing, you have to oh, like- Oh, it's a different story. Because yeah. then they're not, like they're not squam, but then they're very not squam. Yes. <laughs> they're not squam at all. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the village of the one game, I remember Amy booked out the one area and um, me and my housemate walk in and like he, he gets very irritated with stuff like that. Like when he says, I'm um, like caught up, he just says cheers and he walks. Like Those, he that's every single one of my friends as well. Yeah, they're just like, cheers dude, do your yeah. thing, bye. And yeah. I'm, I'm kind of like, save me. <laughs> Take care of me. <laughs> you were like my lifeguard. Yeah. yeah, you're supposed to pull me out of this. And yeah. Amy comes and she takes my arm and his arm and just darts through the Missions. Car. No, like people, like it's like a red sea. Like I've just passed and they, Amy's just here with us through. And like sometimes that's needed. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, like, I feel bad, like after the final, like the people were still in the crowds and stuff, but, and they were like screaming for photos and mm. stuff. And I, like, I feel bad because like, I was just, I wasn't in the, in, in the spot to, to want to do that. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I would, I, like I said hi and whatever, but like, I was just, I just wanted, like, I went to go fetch my, my, my family in the stand. Yeah. And just to get them on the field. And just, I just wanted to kind of be with them and the team. 
I wasn't like I feel bad and sorry if I didn't if there was someone who like wanted a photo or just yeah. a signature and I didn't get to it yeah. I promise you I'll get to that. when I see you guys again I will yeah but um just kind of it's it's tough especially just after it happened but it's yeah. cool like they still stand there and like work one photo the signatures and like we ever grateful for that and I'm be happy we could still make Cape Town smile yes yeah after yeah. After, after such after such a game so yeah yeah like it's it's a mixed emotions about those kind of interactions it is and it's that's actually that's the kind of thing that someone in acting or something like that I don't think has to deal with as much as you guys do so athletes have to deal with win and loss as as an actor or a musician or something that's within the arts it's always open to opinion yeah so if you don't like the show and you choose not to like me that's fine we just never going to interact with each other yeah when it's sport the person's a fan of the team yeah so so they'll be there every single game yeah so the the fan is going through the win and loss with you um and that's such an emotional roller coaster for you guys to kind of be like we've won a game let's all celebrate together as like with fans but please don't take it to a point where i'm getting slapped and thrown around because you guys are also excited about it yeah. like at the same time so it's still respect it but then when a loss happens it's i don't really want to be that person you know like I, I mean, I'd be exactly the same. I'm very emotional about things. I would be extremely emotional if I were an athlete and were dealing with a loss. In that, no, I'm not right now. I don't want to smile. Mm -hmm. Give me a day or two, fucking A, let's have a whole conversation about yeah. it. On the day, once it's just happened and I'm still standing on the field that it happened on, I'm not really in the headspace to want to do this with you right now. Yeah. And sometimes the expectation can be that you should just do it yeah and i always try to make the comparison for people of like this is their job this is your job imagine that your job you have a really cuck meeting or you lose your position or you get degraded in some way and as it happens i come to you i'm like listen let's take a photo and remember this moment it's like no i don't really <laughs> want to do that you know like why would i want to have that you know yeah. um and that's kind of how it feels which is I like to kind of get you got to 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 ask you guys about it in terms of athletes especially rugby players within South Africa because there's such a fandom that I can imagine you dealing with really high levels of pressure from from people um yeah. and I can imagine you felt that this this past week yeah yeah like it is it's weird and like obviously the more you play and stuff to just the more builds up mm. and for me still like these past years has happened very quickly so it's still something yeah. for me to to get used to mm -hmm. um but saying that it's like i'm very like, honored and stuff to be able to do what i do yeah and um still help out where i can and yeah stuff but yeah it's 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 a weird thing to look at because like it's not that i'm un i'm not ungrateful or i really do appreciate it and like when i'm in a small or a show and people come ask it's fine like i would never say no and i always yeah. um smile for a photo and stuff yeah. um and stuff but yeah it's just like i don't when people like grab me like come for a photo <laughs> it's not like eh? well they just yeah. expect it like um listen that like i would, if i i would ask like listen is it fine if you make and get a photo and like mm -hmm. people's like quickly come stand here I'm like listen don't <laughs> Don't order me Can't around. Be quickly. Yeah. Hey. When did that happen the other day? I still I still shouted back at the person. Someone barked at me. Not like roof, but like barked an order. And it was it was I remember where we were, if we were in a mall or something, and someone did the like Hey! That? Yeah. And I was like, oh mm. please don't do that. Yeah. Um Hey, come here, um, 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 lioness guy, come, yay. And I'm like, yes, sir, dude. <laughs> now, immediately now, I don't like you. Like, You're, you know, you like, don't call anyone like that. No, it's weird, friend. you yeah. know, like, you, you, you wouldn't say that to your friend. If, if, if any, if I went to any of my friends and I was like, hey, come here, they'd <laughs> bitch slap me on yeah. the spot and be like, don't click at me, you know? But <laughs> with that then also being said, I understand 
the headspace that that moment is in. Mm. So I'm trying really hard to appreciate it. Also, because my insecurity wants it to never go away. Because if it goes away, I feel like, shit, I'm not doing enough for people to love the stuff that I'm making, mm, um, yeah. which is my personal insecurity. So I try to overcompensate with so much gratitude that even when the situation feels awkward or you're being like physically handled, I'm still smiling and being like, ah, and then I get to my seat and I sit down. And I'm like, that was actually really, you know, like my shirt's been pulled and like, I'm not feeling lacquer right now. Yeah. I feel like I kind of got pushed around a crowd. Um, and I'm trying to force myself to be better at that in, in facing it head on and learning how to deal with it and kind of yeah. be like, hey, listen, please don't do that. Like, let's stand and take a photo. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, let me think. Like, struggling to get a girlfriend. Like, I'm looking for it, but damn, it's, it's tough. Like, some really? guys make it so easy. <laughs> look so easy. Um, and like you, like, you guys and like JJ and Nina, like, and like my best, my husband, my best friend, his girlfriend, like, it's so like organic. And I'm like, shit, where? I'm trying, yeah. not trying, but like, flip, just one, one to stick. You yeah. know, like, obviously I'm still yeah. young. I'm young and uh, it, it, it's gonna happen when it's supposed to happen. But like, sometimes it's nice to like have someone. Yeah. And because like, course. I don't wanna get that, like, not the stigma, but the reputation of like, the single guy, you know, like the single guy always like... Like a playboy. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't want that. <laughs> it's so funny you say that. Is, are both rolling? Yes. Okay. Because it's, I'm not shy. Like, yeah. my friend asked me, like he asked me yesterday, because he's had like two girlfriends, but it's like, yeah. like he's only like spent time with both of them. Like he hasn't like dated. He hasn't been in the dating Oh, seat. I see. He hasn't taken the next... Yeah. No, like he's like had a girlfriend and then they broke up and then he was like single for a while and just yeah. with the boys and then he actually like I was friends with her and I introduced them to each other and then they started dating. So he hasn't he hasn't like been in the dating game or whatever. I see. And he's like, see. how do you like ask a girl for a coffee and then you just go sit there and like it's not awkward? Then listen, <laughs> I've been here a while. I know how to. I know how to do that part. Yeah. Like being single, I know how to do it. Like, yes. It's it's, it's fine, like it's unlike. And sometimes like, I enjoy it, enjoy it just because it's like I'm doing my thing and like especially in this year, if I had to like start seeing a girl now, it would be quite selfish I think. Because there is a possibility I may not be here for the whole yeah. the half of the year. Yeah, now you start saying. something with someone and it's and then you leave again. Yeah. Like, like I wouldn't like if I was in the other position, I would like feel like oh shit, like this is. Yeah. Um, but sometimes like doing things like like saying oh you guys or JJ you know, or Stephen and Amy or my husband and his girlfriend like want to go do something like I'm always the, the third wheel <laughs> like, you know like I never like have someone there and it's sometimes it's fine sometimes like shit it'll be cool to have someone there but, but I don't know it's going to happen in the right spot on the right time yeah 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 you're single have fun when you're single yeah 100% have fun men, women, whatever, have a jewel when you're single. <laughs> both sides, I'm saying both can have fun. Um, do your thing. It's, um, yeah. oh, flip, it's, just, it's funny. And like, obviously, like, when I know the person, the girl would like, you know, like, accept me as I am. But like my friend said, like, really, you give such a, like, I would think you're such a, a playboy or like a, because you, you're young, you play rugby, tall. Okay, so it's like assumption. Assumptions, like, and, I know the right girl won't listen to those assumptions. No. But I mean, like, I, I, I can understand, like, people I like, think this guy doesn't, like, he's... And I'm not shy. Like, I chat to anyone yeah. and stuff, and um, I think they kind of, like, people take it up wrongly. But also, like, what's wrong with... Being single. Like, there is exactly. nothing wrong with it. And, um, but, yeah, like, I, I'm excited for whenever that part of my chapter in my life has to, yeah. like, to start. Yeah. But, um... It's tough when like everyone around you like, is in relationships. Yeah, like yeah. we've got a friend group from from school. Like we have a WhatsApp group and everything. And I'm the only single guy. Two of them. One is married. <laughs> one is engaged. Other one's in a long term relationship. And then me. Really? The constant is in that whole group is I'm the, I'm always single. Yeah. yeah and the yeah. other is like yeah. So <sighs> it's it's tough, but yeah. uh, it's. It's, it's, it's also fun. It's, I think it's part of the journey, which is it cool. It is. And it's, it's cool. you, I think you also dealing with something that not a lot of people are in yeah. terms of being a well-known athlete. 
And you need someone special. Exactly. Um, you need someone special, but also, I think maybe in your position, maybe it does take a little bit more time. Because I guarantee you, if you lined up 10 girls in this room right now, every single one of them would be like, I'll date him. For the wrong reasons, and you exactly. don't want that. Yeah. Exactly. It's, so, so it, I, th I think it maybe will take you longer. Like, I know Steven and Amy have been together for like... He was like 19, so like they met each other like after school. Yeah. She's two years older than him, but I mean like, it's been like that ever since. A lot of the guys, like hey. a lot of rugby players... Yeah, two years older. Hey. <laughs> a lot of rugby players... Like it's their high school sweethearts or yeah. like their first girlfriends out of school that they are married to now and stuff. And obviously not the same and like time is, <laughs> time is ticking on, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, but it's, it will, it will happen when it must, yeah. but like, you know, it's, it's funny how things work out and stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, like it'll be cool, but shit, yeah, it's, it's a- the, the, the goal that you will meet will be incredible. Yeah, no, that's sure. a given. It doesn't help, like I've got two stories. Um, one, like me, I've, be, I, I've watched How I Met Your Mother before, but I watched it again. And like watching that, I'm like, oh goodness, like I don't want to be Ted. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, no spoilers, I don't want to be Ted. Um, love him as a character, but like, I don't want to, like he, obviously it ends well, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone. Yeah. On the phone, and they asked like, do you have a girlfriend or whatever? We want all the wags like on, yes. on the thing. Yes. With Bobo, it'd be quite cool not to put you guys under too much like video stuff for the week, just to keep you guys calm, whatever. And I was like, sorry, like unfortunately I don't. Like, yeah, I can't send anyone. I'm sorry. Like, oh, but can your mom come? I was like, sure. But now, like, now Steven's wife is there, Marnie's girlfriend, and yeah, his mom. I was like, that's a loser thing. Like, your I mom love goes and stands there. Like, yeah. So I was like, that's why those two instances like. Maybe she like. Hopefully, this can happen yeah. soon. I think that's awesome, though. It's like no, I've, I love it. I've, like, I've always there. said, Lord willing, touch wood, one day I get to do a big premiere overseas. To take your mom or like my sister or something, like that's really cool. It is, you know, to 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 get to do that for them. Um, I actually saw that interview. I didn't listen to it, to be honest. But I saw the interview and I saw that your mom was in it and I was like this is dope yeah, but it, cool. to, like from an outsider to me it's dope because you got Amy Amy Kitsoff and your mom sitting together like having a lecker chat yeah. which just shows you how much of a family environment the Stormers team is yeah. um, which was so cool to see but I can understand why that would feel a little bit strange for you you know and he asked her about like what, what, what girl does your mom need and this oh and really? And is this on, a on thing? Air, like no, like it's a, it's obviously a general conversation. Like everyone's like asking, like when are you getting a girlfriend? Like it's been, and it, obviously like I don't care about it, but obviously more people ask. Like it the more it's like, like subconsciously, yeah. subconsciously like puts a expectation there. Yes. But um, I'm very chill. Like it, when it happens, it happens. Um, obviously I've got a lot on my plate now, so it's I think it's for the good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but somewhere there will be a stage where I, I think I'll be ready. Yes. Ready for it. It doesn't help on moving to Seapoint next year, but I mean... Hey! It's coming from outside of town. From Stelly's. From, from <laughs> Stelly's, yeah. From Stelly's, yeah. I've got to retire. Put my hang on Stelly's boots up. And there you go. Go sign with a new team. Yeah. See yeah. Just, just letting all the girls know I'm going to be doing promenade work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. You'll, you'll see uh, Evan Rose every morning with a cup of coffee walking promenade. Yeah. <laughs> Use it or lose it. Yeah, there you go. I'll be there with my coffee. Yeah, you want to join? Join. join. Yeah, you, no. exactly. Come and have a coffee. Uh, 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 you must be so stoked to moving across. I remember, like last time we when we when we had a coffee in town the other day, we were saying how Stellenbosch is so busy. It is busy. It's super, super busy. Um, like it's just the influx of people that move there, and the schools are full and 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 everything. So, um. It's going to be nice, a bit of a change of scenery. And yeah, obviously, yeah. I've not outgrown Stellenbosch, but like all of my mates who are finishing up the studies or I really have finished up and started yeah. working. So it's like a, there's a big age gap. I'm in that weird age gap where I'm not a student anymore, but I'm not a young married person with, yes. their, with their first child on their way. Because yeah. that's basically Stellenbosch in a nutshell. And obviously, the families who are there. Yeah. So I'm literally in between and yeah. stuff. So it's. um. Obviously, it's a beautiful town. I'm, I'm gonna miss it, but like 
I think yeah, some like especially if you're young, like live in town, it's that's lacking. It's lacking and it's easy yeah. and it's, it's, everyone has to experience it and it's a beautiful yeah. city, I mean like it's Cape Town in your twenties. It's the best. You can't get better. Yeah. No, so I'm very really excited for it. It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a nice experience. Yeah. I'm so stoked to have you that side. It's now it's person. It's, it's gonna be so dope. Yeah. yeah. We'll do dinners and stuff like yeah, that. How that is that? Yeah. We'll invite all the girls we know. Yeah, oh, cheers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, oh, cheers, come now, make a plan. Yeah, yeah sort of guy. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Like, let's, let's. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. Put me in the ring, guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna create a poster and just send it out to like any. Personally. Well, I feel like this is a good start. It's a good this record. is actually, <laughs> watch us turn this into a reel and put the reel out. And suddenly you're going to get DMs from people being like, hey, I heard you're looking for love. Like, oh, God. It's like a lol. <laughs> we might end up making this worse for you. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. No, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. No. Yeah, it's funny. Oh, I enjoy Surely it. Surely Amy knows someone. The thing is, like, Amy's told me this, like, her friend is like, not, I don't want to, like, you should never bring age and woman in the same sentence, but, like, they, they, a bit older than I am. Okay. So it's like, that's it's, a good point. It's like, not like there's anything wrong with them, like, awesome people and, yeah. and beautiful people, but it's like a big age gap. Like, sometimes people yeah. tend to forget, yeah. I'm only 23. So, you're it, 23. yeah, I'm still. Why did I think you were 26. People like always like when they meet me and always think I'm like 26, 27, like older. And when I told them, listen, it happened once. I uh, like I was chatting to this to this girl and like she asked me how old I was, and it was like I started playing right there. But and I've always lied if I know like they're really? older. I was like, because it's not gonna help. You say, yeah, I'm no, 21. Like it's yeah, 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 I'm 25. Yeah, yeah they always like I'm 25, 26. Like and they believe me. <laughs> and then the one time it happened and then they came like I saw the same person like a week or two later and they're like, You're a liar. I said that's a that's that's a wild thing to it's say. Quite an yeah, it's a bad yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very like serious accusation. What do you base it off? Yeah. And she like Googled me. <laughs> <laughs> no ways. And it says like, yeah, twenty one January two thousand. Twenty one years old. Oh boy. I was like, oh, I don't believe everything on the internet, yeah, but internet lies. Double down, just double down. Yeah, just deny, deny, deny. Yeah, I tried to deny, but uh, after a while, I was like, ah, oh, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then from there on, I just, I was always completely honest about <laughs> my age. Yeah, um, I actually just say younger. Yeah. No, I'm 19. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 19. yeah, I'm 23. Yeah, use yeah, yeah. it or use it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's the thing. Like, and obviously, like a lot of those people, but all of this, so like, I've moved in all the crowds and stuff because yeah. of the sport and whatever. Yeah. So you get kind of used to it and yeah. you get used to the chats and how people yeah. communicate and stuff. So that's why people sometimes say anything I'm a bit older. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's, it's a good, good thing. thing. It's a good thing. We'll, we'll put out some feelers, see who we meet and who we find. We'll say, Evan, Evan Rose, looking for love, but only after, only after the World Cup. <laughs> I mean, off then looking for three, like, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, <laughs> dude. I'm so excited to see you this year. I'm so excited to see you play again. Thank you for an incredible URC season. The final was so much fun. Your performance was incredible. Your yellow card, I still think, was bullshit. But what do I know about <laughs> rugby? Um, I don't think that was. Also, it was the first. Uh, it it was unintentional. It was the first mistake made of the game. It was like 15 minutes in. To go straight to yellow was a bit strange, but okay, whatever, whatever yeah, let's just leave it at that. Um, awesome game, shout out to the Stormers, you guys played phenomenal rugby all season. And it was a tight one, a two point, a two point difference, um, we'll take the silver, that's a gold, the silver, the most cap uh, captain, um, very proud, very, very proud. So thank you for what you guys did all season long. The whole city's been fired up because of you guys for like eight, nine months. So thank you oh, for that. Thank yeah. you for you guys. I mean, yeah, it's, we do it for you guys, and always thank you for you guys, you and Chase, and the support and the beers and the village, um, village missions and stuff. Yeah, like it's it's, it's it's good memories. Thank you. Yeah, it's sick, man. Love awesome. you, lots, man. Thank you for coming in, dude. It's been sick. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's Evan Bruce.